as we head into the second decade of the 21st century, I strongly believe that the rate of change, the rate of transformation is only increasing. It is actually increasing exponentially. And the two areas where the rate of change will be much higher than what we had anticipated, number one would be on the human talent side. I mean, we have, we have seen already the signs that the empowerment of individuals, whether it was the uh, Anna Hazre movement in India or whether it was the various uh, things that happened in the, the Ar Arab world, it clearly shows is that human ask, human contribution, human need for inclusiveness, human need for being able to influence uh, various decisions have only become higher than in the past. Similarly, on the second side, I do believe that man and the machine. So on the human side, I could go on, but on the machine side, the, you know, Facebook is already the third largest nation in the world. We already have 35 billion connected devices. We are hearing that every atom would be a connected device because now with IP version 6, you would have, uh, you know, addresses available for every atom to be able to communicate. So, and on the machine side, again you are seeing the change is far more rapid than anyone would have anticipated. Actually, the, the joke now going around is that uh, science fiction books can't write fiction fast enough because the reality is delivered much faster than the fiction. The industry that I represent is IT services, engineering services and back, back office operations. Uh, clearly two important factors for my businesses are people. The second important factor is the automation. And both of them are going through, as I said, very rapid transformation. Uh, our belief is that uh, there will be phenomenal changes as we go along. That people would want to do a lot more interesting work because machines are getting more capable of doing a lot of mundane work. So the words that you used to hear artificial intelligence, uh, when you used to think about intelligent humanoids or the intelligent robots, I mean, I think it's going to become a bigger reality, which only tells you it's not that a human being will not be doing. A human being will be doing things at a very different plane altogether. And similarly, machines, we all know a smartphone is now more capable than a mainframe of yesterday. And similarly, with the rate of change in the communication uh, broadband availability, we already have 3G, we have seen LTE, which a lot of people call it 4G. We are already talking about 5G. With, the lim with that kind of a bandwidth available and with that kind of mobile devices available, that today a tablet is replaces airline manuals, is probably going to replace airline toilets. So the changes are all around us. I think innovation is something which all of us, whether it is organizations, whether it is societies or whether it is countries, all of us want to be differentiated, all of us want to do things differently and not only differently, we also want to do it in much shorter time with a lot more functionality and at a much lesser price. So one is what I would call a forced innovation. Because if you don't innovate, somebody else will. So for example, if I was a TV manufacturer, I have to give the thinnest, the la longest lasting TV at the, at the cheapest price. So that means maybe the formula would be one third the price and three times the functionality. Now the second part is at what is called as disruptive innovation. A disruptive innovation is you find different ways of doing things. 
So instead of a TV, just to take an example of TV, why do I need a physical device called TV? Why can't I be why can't I energize the atoms right in front of me? Why can't I sit in the garden and point out to a, a, a space and say that is the TV? And if I can do that, then there is no physical device required. And if I if I am doing it, then I have basically taken over that market. And many of those examples will happen right in our lifetimes. It will happen right in front of us. I think again, uh, you know, go back. What are the challenges the world is facing today? Fiscal management. Uh, employment, uh, number three, imbalance of trade between various nations, uh, eventually commodity, today it is oil, tomorrow it, it could be water, third day it could be something else. The reality is that there is, an, there is a need for commodity, last but not the least, agro-foods. With the population rising, I mean there would be challenges on the food. Uh, or the pricing. Now, all of this, as I said, right through my conversation today, the two important parts are technology and human. I strongly believe that the governments around the world will have to adopt, number one, that protectionism cannot exist because the levels of communication have increased so much that artificial trade barriers are not going to help, artificial boundaries are not going to help, and, and we still find a lot of protectionism as an answer to an employment problem. I, in my, my opinion is that you need to embrace technology, you need to be able to embrace efficiency and productivity, you need to embrace that like an uh, individual company is valued on operating margins, on their new growth differentiated models, on how they are able to position themselves in the market, the governments will have to, again, use technology and the human uh, capital to create that differentiation. And that is, I believe, firms like ours, which spend a fair amount of energy and time to, to try and make firms more competitive in the market. Similarly, I think we need to spend more time with the governments to make them more competitive so that they can address some of their challenges.